You're listening to Finsights, a podcast published by the UNSW Finance and Banking Society. Today I'm joined by Alex Kai. Alex is in his fourth year of a commerce economics degree at UNSW and is a vice president at the UNSW Finance and Banking Society. On top of this, Alex was also recently nominated as an Australian Financial Review Top 100 Future Leader. Welcome, Alex. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ollie. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's a pleasure to give my insight on my university experience um, and just talk a little bit about my not only industry experience, but also how I found university um, and some tips and tricks for you guys as well. Awesome. Alex, as I alluded to before, you've been in the finance and banking society for about two years. Looking back, how do you think being in society developed you both on a professional and a personal level? Awesome. Fantastic question. Um, so just to give a bit of context, um, I joined UNSW FinSOC last year um, as a sponsorships director. So unlike most people, I came in at a director level um, and I joined the sponsorships team, which is an externals facing role where we work directly with clients, sponsors um, and industry related parties in general. Um, for me, as someone who had very little experience beforehand, I think it was a very good segue into not only university life in general, but also a little bit of a segue into industry experience as it stood without actually going into industry. And what I mean by this is that we got to work directly with sponsors, we got to work directly with industry parties, not only on an external level, but also an internal level as well, working across cross portfolio, working across industry leaders to create events, sign on sponsors, you name it. Um, I think for me, it was an amazing experience, not only in terms of professional level, but also personal level. And I'll delve a little bit deep, deeper into these two categories in a second. But on the personal side, and I think what a lot of people join societies for in the first reason, is to really gain friends, um, get an understanding of what university and society life is like, and also have fun while you're at it as well. And I think for me, over the past one and a half, two years, I've met some of the most amazing people that, you know, I'm glad to call my friends today, right? Um, we're all segued into this little society where we have meetings every week, we hang out together, we have social events together, road trips, mm. you name it. Um, and we have some of the most fun times of our lives in these little segments. Um, and we come to know each other over a few years period, whether it be one year, two years, or three years, deciding how long you stay with the society. And you tend to build relationships and friendships over those years that carry on past university. So for example, a lot of my directors in Subcom, I talk to outside of a university basis. We're able to just connect, um, go on social outings together and have fun. Um, but on the second note of a professional level, I think being in a society really opens the doorways to industry experience before having your foot in the door. And what I mean by this is that to get industry experience, usually you'd have to do internship, graduate role, some sort of work experience, right? From a society perspective, you get to correlate or like um, interact with sponsors directly without actually having to commit to an internship or whatnot to get a taste of what it is. So for example, you work directly with sponsors, industry parties, you name it, and you get that level of industry experience and exposure through a society through society involvement in general, specifically within sponsorships, right? But on that um, note as well. Sorry, just to ask yeah. a quick question. Does does talking to these sponsors as a sponsorships director, does it does it kind of break down this barrier where a lot of students might look at these firms and be like, like they look, you know, they look really scary and professional. Mm. But when you're but when you're dealing with them, they're not. And do you think this helps you when you're applying for for internships? Yeah, fantastic question. Um, I remember coming into my first year for a bit of context. Um, you know, I was bloody scared. Like I hear big four, I hear MBB, I hear investment banks, and I'm like, what is going on here? Right. Mm -hmm. And so joining a society not only gives you a level of awareness into what these firms actually do and what they mean, but also you get to correlate um, and you get to interact specifically within whether it be HR, whether it be campus recruiters, whether it be analyst associates, all the way to a partner level with these people in these firms and it really I think for me breaks down the barrier of scariness that a lot of people especially people in their early years first years and second years tend to have when they're recruiting for these firms they overthink hey these are big billion dollar firms that operate across the world and I'm just a student like 
how's that going to work, right? It breaks down more so the mental barrier of you thinking, hey, it's such a big entity and I'm just as shit, how am I ever going to break it, right? I think that mm. was the most critical mental barrier for you to break or for me to break um, when I was going through the directorship position. Yeah, right. Um, so when you were, I guess, what would you say to someone who is unsure if they want to join a society in general? Because I, I remember for me, it, it, was, it was very scary. It seemed like everyone sort of knew each other. Um, yeah, like what, like what would you say to those people? Yeah, fantastic question. Um, I understand where a lot of people come from in the sense that um, they may not come from, you know, an environment or a friendship group that is very tight within societies. Um, and when applying, you feel like you're a bit of an outsider. And I understand that because that was exactly me coming in. Um, in Finsock, I think I knew maybe one or two people beforehand. Mm. Um, I wasn't part of the subcom. I had no idea of any of the culture, any of the work that we do, anything of that sort. But for me, I put my foot down and I said, hey, let's jump in. Let's give it a go and see what happens, right? And when I actually did that and actually got an offer to join the society, at first, I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of a culture shock in terms of, I come from a very quiet background. My friends are all, you know, we play games together online, mm. we hardly ever meet. And then all of a sudden you're going out to these drinking events, these road trips, and it's a very big culture shock, right? But I think for me, what I found specifically within FinSoc and I guess wider societies in general, is that people are incredibly welcoming and understanding of that. Mm. You have to understand that people come from all different backgrounds, whether it be a selective school, private school, some school all the way, you know, in Western Australia or fucking Uluru for that matter, right? Could be anywhere. And they come together with a common interest of having fun, meeting friends, creating mm. relationships and gaining industry experience, right? And you'll tend to find these people all come together very well and are very welcoming because even the directors, VPs, presidents, they've all been through a subcom director route and they understand how hard it is fitting in. Mm. And they try their very best to create a culture where everybody can fit in, everybody is welcome. Um, and everybody can just have fun while they're at it. Awesome, awesome. So we discussed societies, but there, you also have done another finance extracurricular, which are case competitions. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us first what case competitions actually are? And second, what were your experiences like doing them? Yeah, beautiful question. So on top of my society experience, something I've been personally really passionate about across my um, university life is getting involved in case competitions. Now, I'm sure many of you out there have seen um, society posts promoting XYZ case competition, but to essentially break it down, a case competition is an informal, it's an informal format where um, you get a case, for example, you get a case question and you're in a team of four and you're tasked together to solve that question over a maybe two week time frame um, and present it back to a panel of judges through a heats phase and then through a finalist phase where you actually get to present to industry representatives. Um, talking a little bit about my experience of why I joined in the first place and why I got, how I got involved. Um, was that coming into first year, I had very little industry experience. Um, I wanted to develop some of the key skills that are needed in industry. So for example, problem solving, analytical thinking, how to structure a case, how to approach you know, assessment centers in general where they do give you cases. Um, and I wanted to get a level of exposure into these areas with, before I actually went through the recruitment process for a lot of the firms out there. Um, and for me, I got really involved with case competitions in my first and second year, and I actually found it to be an amazing experience. So it was at first very, very difficult in terms of understanding how to structure a question, how to create a presentation, you know, how to, you know, improve your presentation skills so that you're able to pitch not only to society members, but to a board of panelists as well from industry. It was a very sharp learning curve at the start. But what I found over time is that the more case competitions I did, not only did the better I get, but also the more skills I learned to apply or the more skills I come to garner over these case competitions, 
I've learned to apply in industry settings. And I'll give you guys an example. So for example, in cases, a lot of the questions are focused on problem solving, analytical thinking. How can XYZ company enter ABC market? How can XYZ company improve ABC bottom line revenue for in five years time or something? These are the exact types of questions that you'll get in consulting interviews, that you'll get in big four assessment centers, and you'll know how to apply the level of critical thinking and structuring that you gain through these competitions straight into an assessment center format, right? And luckily for me, I've actually had the opportunity to not only you know, participate in domestic case competitions, but also once you get to a level, you can have the opportunity to represent UNSW on an mm. international level, which is super exciting. Um, and despite COVID, um, some people have had the opportunity to travel overseas and represent UNSW overseas, right? Um, so getting involved is not only an amazing opportunity for you to get hands-on experience in developing those critical skills, but also um, if you're really into it, also represent UNSW on an international level one day mm. as well. I guess like on that note, um, you've, you've developed a lot of industry experience. Do you think that being involved in the societies and getting this extracurricular experience in uh, case competitions, do you, think, do you think the recruiters looked at that? Like, do you think it made you stand out? Mm, fantastic question. Um, so I want to take a step back in terms of all of these extracurricular activities, what's the main takeaway of all of these? And I think for me, it comes down to two things. Number one, critical skills that are needed in industry. And number two, professional development, industry networking, and building professional relationships. In terms of how they made me stand out to recruiters, it's come through two sort of ways. Um, the first way, like I mentioned, is through industry networking, professional development, and all that kind of stuff. What I mean by this is when you're in a society or through case competitions, you get a level of industry exposure that you wouldn't normally get just with university classes alone um, or just with courses alone, right? Mm -hmm. um, and from there on in, you understand, you know, how recruiters think, how to network, how to professionally develop, how to build relationships more importantly. Um, and you'll tend to meet through these case competitions and societies and whatnot. You'll tend to understand what different firms are about. You understand how to tailor your resume, tailor your cover letter to these firms, what these firms actually do, and also network with the people within these firms to gain a level of understanding you wouldn't have normally got out of if you just did university alone or you just did your courses alone, right? That's number one. Number two, and I think what is more important, is the critical skills you learn to apply in industry when you're either interviewing or actually on the job. So I've gone through assessment centers where the questions have, that have been asked to me are very similar to case competition questions. Um, and I've gone through assessment centers where, you know, the interview questions that they gave me about, you know, what do you think of our company? What do we actually do? Why are you interested? I know how to answer all of these because I've developed those relationships with those people. Mm. I understand what the firm does. And I also understand on the second hand of the group assessments and assessment centers, how to actually work the group, you know, in a society setting, how to actually tackle a question that's given to me and how to structure an answer as well. A lot of people tend to mitigate these key skills um, and then they're only prepared, you know, two weeks before they get their AC. But mm. if you're really interested, especially in very high performing industries such as banking or consulting, to actually learn these skills beforehand, whether it be first year, second year or third year, it's never too late, and learn how to apply these skills, whether it's in a consulting setting, whether it's in a case setting, or whether it's an assessment center setting. I think it's really helped in terms of improving my internal capabilities. Um, in you know finding these jobs and going through the recruitment processes for a lot of these firms. Mm. Awesome. Um, thank you so much for your insights, Alex. I think it it'll really help those first year students who are who are really unsure about if they should get involved. Because you know it is it is it is a big commitment, this kind of stuff, but you know, for myself personally, and I'm sure Alex would agree with me you know, the commitment was totally worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and on that note, I, I don't know when this, when this podcast is going to be released, but Binsock is recruiting for our subcoms. 
So be sure to check that out. And if applications have closed by the time I upload this, um, we have director recruitment at the end of the year. So be sure to check that out and follow all our socials. They should be, they should be, the links should be on our, you'll, you'll find the links somewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'll post them. But yeah, thank you, Alex, for, for your time today. Beautiful. It's a pleasure being on this podcast. And thank you, Ollie, for hosting me on. Appreciate it. Awesome.